Sevgili izleyenler, TRT Haber ekranlarında çok özel... Hello, on TRT News, we are here with a very special broadcast and a very special interview together with you. We have a very important guest, the Foreign Minister, Mr. Hakan Fidan, is our guest today. Welcome to our show. We are in a very busy agenda and you have, you're in the middle of a very busy uh, contact traffic and this is your first TV broadcast uh, together with TRT News. Thank you very much. And the most significant issue of the recent days, maybe the main topic of all this intense agenda, the Israeli-Palestinian issue, two weeks have passed in the events that have been experienced. There is significant loss of life. If we are to go back to the first day when everything first started, the 7th of October, that was surprising for everyone. How do you evaluate the beginning of the incidents? Then we will talk about present and future. First of all, thank you very much for hosting me in your program. I also would like to greet our audience who watch us in front of their screens with love and respect. Of course, the Palestine issue is an important issue for all of us. It is indeed an issue that has gone through various stages. And the latest crisis that erupted on October the 7 really worries us all. There was a siege of Gaza before in 2009 and 2014. Israel once again had very serious operations against Gaza. I was again a part of the same team in these mediation talks and other issues at that time, first when our president was prime minister and then he became the president. I'm uh, one of those uh, close witnesses of this issue throughout its historical development. Well, today's crisis, I mean the crisis on October the 7th, is a crisis that many relevant circles have seen coming but tried to cover it up. The attacks by Hamas that started on October the 7th were actually the evidences of the wrongness of Israel's policies in the region, especially in the last decade. While it revealed the weaknesses of the national security system that Israel had developed for himself, it also showed that the structure and the system that Israel indeed put forward, mainly through diplomacy, was actually a project of failure. From the onset of the crisis, we, as the Republic of Turkey, saw that as a strategic mistake for Israel to make peace only with its neighbors and not accepting a two-state solution with the Palestinians. However, this story began to be presented as if it were the reality and the fact, both by American-centered media covering the issue and by Europe's and European countries. We knew that this crisis would inevitably erupt somewhere. Although certain level of progress has been achieved with the Abraham Accords, we have also seen that the pressure and oppression against the Palestinians has become more systematic, more widespread and more intense. It was obvious that this would explode at certain point. As a result, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that this crisis exploded. So coming back to today, two weeks have passed already. In Gaza, there is a very unique process going on, as you have mentioned, uh, compared to 2009 and 2014. For instance, in 2014, I was in Gaza. When we compare, it's quite different. At the time, there was power, water. Uh, now there is neither. Hospitals are being bombed in a much more intense intense way, mosques being bombed, uh, there is a channel being opened to the south, but in the south bombardment continues as well. So all this that is being experienced as Foreign Minister Akan Fidan and as a human being, how do you evaluate? Well, at the moment there is a human tragedy going on right now, there are no excuses to it. This 
needs to be stated clearly, and I do believe it is necessary to reveal and disclose this picture in all its nakedness. So what do we do as individuals and as the state in the face of this human tragedy? What do the region do, the United Nations, the entire nation-state system, the international system, the regional alliances doing about this issue? This needs to be understood. Well, as you said, this crisis is really a different one from the previous crisis, because Israel is indeed uh, seeking a great revenge here. The losses suffered by Israel on October the 7th were the biggest losses since 1973. But Israel is seeking great retaliation, because it really believes that the compensation should be obtained uh, rather than the establishment of peace. However, Israel is not paying attention to the civilian population while it is carrying out this retaliation. It bombs the infrastructure and the superstructure of the people living in the region. So our stance as a country is indeed to define this as a crisis without any mitigation factors or excuses. So this should be defined as a crime against humanity. As a result, a stance needs to be taken against this. As of today, there is no electricity in Gaza, there is no water, there is total siege. As you said, with the war strategy that it has developed, Israel indeed has identified certain areas from north to the south as areas that need to be evacuated. And this is its war strategy. As a result, a widespread bombings have begun. A significant part of the population living in the north has been bombed. More than one million people have gone south. So people are forced to choose between staying in the south and going to the Egypt. This is another dimension of the crisis and this also needs to be stated. So when we look at it, Turkey, not only in the Israeli-Palestinian issue, but also recently, at every crisis that develops in the region, is able to establish dialogue with both parties. So in this point, how do you see the dialogue established by parties, both the Hamas side and the Israeli side? Well, we are in contact with all the parties to the crisis as much as possible. First of all, we are working how to put an end to this human drama and we are working on how we can establish a ceasefire and how the humanitarian aid can be dispatched if it is possible at all. A more comprehensive Endeavors and efforts are also being put forward to make peace permanent. There are certain steps taken in that regard. However, due to the tension in the region, there is hot conflict taking place at the moment. The Americans have also become partners in Israel's efforts to achieve its military goals in Gaza. When we look at the assessments and statements made by the American president and the military authorities, we see that America is in full agreement to act together with Israel in the operations against Hamas. Well, it is really important to understand this. It is not just Hamas or, or Israel. There are other Palestinian groups in the region, and there are other armed groups in the region supporting this cause, starting with Hezbollah. As a result of Hezbollah's engagement, of course, it will not be left alone. There are a wide of range of groups that are ready to be a probable party to this issue, including Hashd al-Shabi in Iraq and UTs in Yemen. Well, 
We have a very intense diplomacy with both states in the region and the states outside of this region with the state actors and non-state actors as well. First, we try to understand the position of the parties and make our analysis accordingly. Secondly, it is also necessary to understand where the parties stand with regards to this conflict. The policy that we have developed in line with our president's vision will be to end conflicts and prevent human tragedy first. And at the next stage, hopefully, we will strive to pave the way for peace as much as possible and preventing further conflicts. Maybe if you ask me later, I can answer in greater detail. We have already started discussing certain issues. So, you're in contact with the parties of the process, but when we also look at the week, you were in a diplomacy traffic every day with third countries. How are those meetings going? Let me give an example when a visit takes place. We already know the messages given after the press conference, but what about outside the press conference? Are there things that they emphasize about the process or expectations from Turkey that you can share with us? How how do other countries see the process and Turkey's role in it? As I had just stated, there are parties that want Turkey to play a real role in many fields. There are certain parties that come to us and request from us to rescue their hostages. The uh, countries indeed apply to us and say that we have uh, citizens who have been taken hostage by Hamas and could you please uh, work on to rescue them. So this is one of the topics that we have been uh, working for a while and our president is also very sensitive about this issue, especially the return of the civilians. When we discussed this with Hamas, Due to the war conditions, they state that they cannot bring together those groups and they state that we, they are in need of time. Of course, due to the military reasons, Israel doesn't want to ensure this ceasefire period and there are currently ongoing efforts for humanitarian aid provision. I was in Cairo last week. As you know, we held meetings. The aid is being provided to Gaza through the Refah border gate, and there is a lot of humanitarian aid brought to the port of El Arish, and 80 tons of humanitarian aid has been sent from Turkey so far, and humanitarian aid is also coming from other countries, and Egypt plays a very facilitating role in this regard, so we need to congratulate them too. However, nothing has been taken inside yet. While doing all of those, of course, we talk with the other countries, and when we talk with the other countries, we realize the following. Since the Palestine issue is an issue that also concerns Israel, the Israelis receiving the unconditional support of America and the West has put incredible pressure even on the countries in the region that want to express their views on the Palestine issue. Well, it has been a practice that has been going on for years for these countries to be put under pressure one by one and to turn their policies in Israel's favor due to small encouraging financial and commercial and political incentives. Well, this network of relationships created by the system unfortunately doesn't currently bring peace, it doesn't bring trust to either Israel or Palestine. Indeed, there is a big lie being systematically implemented here, and this lie needs to be disclosed openly. And the international community should truly embrace this issue 
and make the two-state solution possible. Otherwise, this crisis is indeed bigger than the 2014 crisis, and the 2014 crisis was bigger than the 2009 crisis, and the next crisis most probably would be bigger than today's crisis. So this is a truth that all rational human beings would see. Well, seeing this fact and not doing what is necessary is an attitude put forward not by rational people, but by structures that support ultranationalism and ultranationalist circles following an intensely politicized identity policy. So what should be done to get out of this spiral? So we are in search of this, and we think that there are indeed people who take the idea, who embraces this idea and claim that this can be sold through diplomacy. I think that both the Islamic Cooperation Organization, Arab League and United Nations will be suitable platforms. The current situation will not bring uh, peace or stability. So what will it bring then? Uh, Israel-Palestine as well as in the region, uh, this of course is one of the main problems in the Middle East. How can we resolve it. Many countries are agree that this is a problem, but when it comes to solution, everyone has their own projects. Our president uh, at the UN or at many other platforms voices his offers for a solution. Why is Turkey's solution proposal so important when it comes to bringing it to a solution? What kind of an initiative are we in? As I had just stated, first of all, the view, the stance that we are trying to put forward is a one that genuinely cares for the security of both parties. So our opinion and our stance is valuable here as we are in a position to put forward an approach that is as realistic as possible and our approach indeed takes into account the interests of both parties and that restores the neglected rights of the Palestinians without being exposed to any blackmail in the region. You especially know the attitude of our president, so our president does not accept any blackmail at all whatsoever when it comes to the Palesti Palestine issue, when it comes to other strategic issues, and when it is an issue that closely concerns our country, our region, our nation, the Turkic world and the Islamic world. As a result, your opinion will be valued. However, as I stated, many countries in the region cannot reveal and express their true stance on Palestine issue because every country has its own political economic and serious security problems. And they are in certain merging interests with the West and America. And those interests are used as a leverage against them. They are being forced to take a stand in favor of Israel. So this is quite hurtful situation for those countries. However, it also presents itself as a situation that doesn't hinder the policy that Israel has put forward so far. Turkey, on the other hand, is a country that is ready to take responsibility in terms of what needs to be done and what steps should be taken to truly defend the rights of Palestinians in the region. And Turkey is a country who is ready to assume responsibility, and many countries indeed recognize it. This is what makes us valuable here. We are not irrational on this issue, and we don't think that there is any mistake that we have done in our strategic assessments, and I don't think that our beliefs and our emotions really narrow our thoughts. Quite the contrary, we take our position with a very open mind by making strategic assessments and seeing what kind of interaction the actors, the hegemons and other non-state actors in the region are in, and we are also taking into account their historical attitudes. When we talk to other countries, especially the countries in the region, we don't see that they think differently from us. 
The main problem is that a common stance cannot be put forward. The Islamic world cannot develop a common a joint stance. We have adopted very serious condemnations so far, and unfortunately those condemnations haven't brought much result. Nobody is willing to see those conflicts. No matter which country you go to, this issue is very unpleasant for them. And the reason why many countries do not speak is to avoid carrying this unpleasantness into their own minds and their hearts, because they are in a spiral of despair. We think that we need to get out of this spiral. We believe that if the Islamic world uses the necessary diplomatic platforms, the Islamic world can act as a triggering factor to pull humanity out of the spiral, and we think we are capable of doing this. As long as Islamic countries see their potential regarding the Palestine issue, they will be successful, because after all, there is a reality. There is no one who doesn't support the two-state solution and granting Palestinian rights and stopping the oppression against them. There are no countries in the West or East not supporting this, but unfortunately the oppression itself continues at full speed and gradually gains new dimension. And this oppression becomes more methodical and it is overlooked even more. Well, this being the case, I guess it should make sense for everyone that we are putting forward a more qualified attitude at this point where humanity is deceiving itself. Well, it is seen in the media as well, as it has been the case in many other issues. This perception of reality produced through the media becomes very instrumental in geostrategic issues as well, and the Palestinian issue is one of them. So we should develop rational policies without losing our perception of reality, and we should also take into consideration the capacities of the actors that we are dealing with. That's how we develop this process, and I hope and pray that this process would be beneficial for everyone. And more importantly, we think that this will be for the good of the region. Of course, if there is anyone with a better opinion to establish peace, we are ready to listen to them. As you have expressed, I would like to come back to the attitude of the West. In our region, there is not a single suffering. If uh, for a, for some time now we have been experiencing some suffering between Russia and Ukraine, uh, Turkey is also active there. But when we look at the reaction of the West, uh, the reaction there was quite clear and quite harsh. But we do not see a similar reaction when it comes to Gaza, for instance, the water being cut off or power infrastructure uh, being cut off. Uh, when it comes to these issues, the West, when we compare their reaction to their reaction to Russia, Ukraine, it's either very weak or there is no reaction at all. That is how we see it as the press. How do you see it? Well, this is a very important observation. This also is an observation that proves what I had just stated. Well, while the perception of reality produced for the West supports one movement in Ukraine, it supports another movement in Palestine. At the end of the day, this is a point with the same equation, I have to say. If you make an argument for Ukraine, you need to make the same argument for Palestine. I have just stated that. Unfortunately, there is no policy being developed that is truly based on values, principles and universal moral norms, and we actually do not expect to see this. There is a policy that is highly politicized and carried out true political identities. This is a problem that arises as a result of unconditional support for Israel in every issue. Well, the following shouldn't be forgotten as well. Every action taken definitely triggers a good or bad process. Well, this can happen in people's world of thought, it can happen in the practices of the state. So any conscious shattering step taken in this regard would eventually result in the collapse 
of the international hegemonic system. Well, this system is in now almost in a total failure, so they were deceiving people to a certain extent. This hegemonic system was deceiving people to a certain extent. But I realized that the magic of this hegemonic system is gradually being lost. So in order for the consciousness of humanity to believe in this story, there is a need for a certain level of sincerity. When it comes to the Palestine issue, the West is saying lies both to itself and to the whole world. So based on those lies, a system cannot be established. Such a position, would it contribute to a solution? Uh, we, this is one of the question marks. No, uh, For instance, when we look at the US, in the past few days, a, a significant attack took place, an attack on the hospital, and the morning of that attack, the American president carried out a visit to Israel embracing and hugging and showing very uh, close relations and it looked like a party. Uh, so how should we interpret this? Is this being part of the solution or the problem? I stated it at the outset of my speech, America and some countries unfortunately do not act with a strategic mind. Well, supporting the State of Israel has become a metaphysical belief. This is the biggest obstacle to American politicians pursuing irrational policies, and relevant parties know this very well. Well, while there are such realities, you cannot explain the issue with rational explanations, of course. We also see that certain areas of pressure actually work when skillful diplomatic tools are being employed. Well, this really makes America lose its moral ground. Well, it is a subject that leaves no room for the world to speak, especially the issue of bombing and hospital. Approximately 500 civilians have been martyred. This is a great human tragedy. And the Israeli army spokesman said, we have warned the hospitals should be evacuated, so they didn't listen to our words. Well, those sentences were like a tacit and implicit acceptance of the bombing of the hospital. Of course, different stakeholders taking into account the disadvantage that this loss of morale would bring changed the story and they added another dimension to it. Well, the fact that Biden visited the region under such conditions in a way approved the destruction in Gaza. Well, this is recorded in history, and the countries in the region see this. Muslim communities see this, and Western countries see this as well. Maybe this is not a surprise to many people, but it really creates a perception that could have very different consequences for America. Coming back to the region, you talked about some interventions in Rafah. Turkey has dispatched 80 tons of humanitarian aid. Turkey was one of the first countries to respond. They couldn't go in yet, but also going out is another question. Question mark. In the first few days, there was an evacuation process for Turkish citizens. Is there a new possibility? How many Turkish citizens do we have in the area? Are we in contact with them? Do, you ha do they have the demand to get out? Or in the past, different countries have made the request to help them evacuate their citizens. Is there a new process or expectation? Well, there are certain requests for evacuations. Currently, around 300 of our citizens, some of whom have double citizenships, 
have ongoing evacuations. We really want to evacuate our citizens because we know that they are there and our contacts with them continue throughout the process via our consulate general. In addition to our citizens, there are people with TRNC citizenship who want to be evacuated by us, so their total number is around 700. As you said yourself, we had the opportunity to evacuate some of our citizens in the first few days of the crisis before the border gate has been bombed. We had the chance to evacuate some of our citizens in close coordination with the Egyptian authorities. However, after this uh, border was bombed, the crossing stopped. Well, there is a problem here. Israelis want the border gates to be opened so that the civilians could leave. Egyptians, on the other hand, do not want people to come, but they want humanitarian aid to come inside of Gaza, because what Israel wants is to evacuate a large number of civilians out of Gaza so that they can conduct military operations in the rest of the country much more easily. Of course, this is not a situation that can be accepted by Egypt. Well, I also said that we were on Egypt's side at the press conference that we have held when I was in Cairo. Because we also see that in the region, especially Egypt, Jordan and Lebanon are at risk of destabilization due to the Gaza conflict. We, as the Republic of Turkey, express at every opportunity that we are against the destabilization of those countries. Well, of course, Egyptians are against this situation when it comes to displacing this population, evacuating it from Gaza and sending it to Egypt. Well, the issue whether the border gate will be open is still an ongoing debate. It is being negotiated between Israelis and Egyptians. However, while this negotiation process continues, there is a civil population who cannot receive aid and is living under very difficult conditions. There are ongoing intense diplomatic efforts with the United Nations on this issue, so everyone is doing their best right now. Just like everyone, Turkey is doing its best as well. Is there a possibility for mediation in terms of humanitarian aid activities or, for instance, for a ceasefire in the area? In all these issues, like a mediator, because recently, anywhere a crisis happens anywhere, this is the first question asked, will Turkey, Turkey be a mediator? Well, we have been working on this uh, matter. So what matters for us, Mr. Ahmed, is to find a solution that is uh, for the best benefit of everyone. So the Republic of Turkey is not after taking credit based on the human tr uh, drama. So this is not moral, of course. But when you assess the situation geostrategically, we are ready to play any role to be played, and we will not abstain from playing the necessary mediation role. The, you should be able to have dialogue with all the parties. Well, while we are against the policies followed by Israel and against the fact that Israel is indeed oppressing the civilians, we are still obliged to keep our contact and dialogue with the Israelis and we should really preserve our contacts with the Lebanese political groups and the uh, groups in Syria, in Jordan and with Israeli authorities and you should be able to preserve your contact with all those groups. So we do not have any problems whatsoever when it comes to preserving our contacts with the related segments and with the related parties. And there are a couple of more countries who can really preserve its contact with the related parties. Qatar, indeed, puts a lot of efforts, especially when it comes to the evacuation and the rescue of the hostages. But unfortunately, up until now, no result has been yielded whatsoever. But at the end of the day, we are trying to understand the choices of the different parties and what they think about those mediation efforts. So our contacts with the related parties 
become very instrumental. As the ministry and also our intelligence officers indeed have been working very hard, we also would like to thank them, our colleagues from the intelligence unit has been working very hard on this issue. There are certain issues that have been brought into our discussion agenda when I visited the region. Of course, the privacy should be preserved until all those decisions are taken. In the past, the Republic of Turkey played a mediation role and people trusted in us because we really showed great sensitivity to protecting the privacy of those negotiations. We always abide by the principle of privacy as those negotiations have taken place. And one of the priorities of our president is as follows. So if we are going to play the role of mediation, uh, we will take any necessary steps so that the bloodshed and the tree drops can hold. And this is not the case uh, only for uh, the Palestinian issue, but the mediation is a very sensitive topic and you should be capable enough to carry out such a mediation role and you should be trusted by both parties. So we believe that we are really good when it comes to the mediation, but what matters, of course, is to put an end to this bloodshed and teardrops. It's very important to emphasize that in all the international crises, from time to time we do see frequently, to be honest, that I should be at the forefront as a country, especially I'm talking about Western countries, in the resolution of a problem, giving the message that I was always involved in the solution. But you have a very humane approach, which also shows Turkish diplomacy. Our the main goal is that the bloodshed will be stopped. We will be in it, but it doesn't have to be at the forefront. As a citizen of the Republic of Turkey, I was very proud to hear this. Let me underline that. And you talked about your activities in the area. And there is also the guarantor topic that was recently mentioned, and it was uh, welcomed in the region. Uh, certain issues are developing behind closed doors, but are there any details that you can share with us? Well, with regards to the issue of guarantorship, what I, what I can say is as follows. So if we are after a genuine and realistic peace, so if we are after a solution that will provide a two-state reality uh, in the region and that will ensure security for both Palestinians and Israelis in return, and if you want to ensure a situation where all the people of the region can live in peace and welfare, then the answer to this question lies in history. So when we look at the recent history, first of all, we should eliminate all the factors that cause this conflict to increase in the region. And we need to learn from those mistakes. Well, the Palestine issue has several aspects. First of all, there is the issue of Masjid al-Aqsa. This concerns all Muslims. And there are also territorial issues in the region that concerns the countries of the region. As you know, the reason for the establishment of the Islamic Cooperation Organization, OIC, is the Palestine issue. The Muslim countries have sensitivities about this issue. So an agreed peace in the region is not only important for the Palestinians, but at the same time, the parties of the conflict should embrace this peace agreement and they should abide by this agreement and the nations of those two states should really abide by this agreement. And there should be a guarantorship provided to the Israelis as well. Otherwise, it is not possible for two nations to come together and establish peace.
With the unconditional support of America, the Israelis have obtained temporary peace, but they couldn't have a permanent peace. After every crisis, more Israeli citizens and soldiers die as well. Well, this shows one thing. Despite developing arm technologies and cutting-edge technology, there is no permanent security in the region. You can't know who will attack when, because after all, you are invading the lands of some other people. You are not solving this problem. Well, the problem is as follows. The Israelis are not opting for a two-state solution. And the Israelis are overlooking to the rights of the Palestinian people. So Israel is undersigning agreements with the Arabic countries as it is being forced by the Americans. They think that this issue will be forgotten. This methodology led to a huge mistake. And it has created very problematic consequences for Israel itself. Well, they analyzed each country so well. They learned how to make agreements with each country. I have been following for years, I said it recently, tactically speaking. Such perfect steps are being taken. Unfortunately, the strategic road that they follow is leading to the abyss. So this is the thing that they cannot see. In the big picture, they don't see that they are leading to a failure. So they are really blind in that. Okay, you develop alliances, you receive the support of America, you receive the support of West, and you give political and economic incentives to certain countries in the region, and you develop your relations with them, but this is not bringing any permanent peace in the region. This shows us that Certain issues have been neglected and swept under the rug, and there will be no permanent peace and security. So the issue of guarantee and guarantorship is actually a matter of the countries in the region actively embracing the issue. It should be understood this way. Other approaches might be opted for. There might be some other alternatives, other solutions can be developed. What is important here is that the regions of the country should take responsibility and Turkey should be also involved in this process so a solution can be found and as the Republic of Turkey we are ready to do our best of course and the regions of the, uh, the countries of the region should also take responsibility. Well these steps might sometimes seen extremely tiring or even risky to some countries. There might be even those who think that why this should bother Turkey. Well, if you can take certain diplomatic steps and if you can take certain steps why not taking it? Otherwise, if you wait this problem that has grown bigger and, and bigger, it will come in front of your door as a fireball. So there is no need for that. Frankly speaking, through diplomatic efforts, Turkey can prevent this crisis turning into a bigger and greater problem. That's why Turkey is taking uh, great efforts. So in this case, you touched on this during your uh, remarks, but I would like to ask specifically, in the case of a possible agreement, could we see Turkey as one of the guarantors? Yes, we can. Well, as I said, Turkey can play a very important role in that regard. So if our allies and our fans in the region 
find that fit, then we can play a very important role. Well, on the other hand, it is really important who will take the guarantorship role on the Israeli side. Maybe we should find an international uh, methodology in that regard. What matters is, Mr. Ahmed, as we uh, speak with our interlocutors, we say the same thing to our Israeli counterparts and American counterparts. There are two ways to be followed after this crisis. The first way uh, will lead to bigger conflicts in the region. Either we will opt for this choice or we will establish peace and we will put an end to wars and conflicts in the region. And we are putting a lot of effort so that the second route is chosen. We hope and pray that our call will be listened. And we have discussed this matter within the framework of the OIC meeting. And there will be a summit in Cairo this weekend. There will be various participants there from East and West. It is indeed a platform that we also support. We also hope that in this platform, hopefully we will create an atmosphere where negotiations will be carried out leading to a two-state solution that gives Palestinians their legitimate rights. We support all kinds of progress in this kind. You are expressing it very clearly. Turkey, for the stopping of the bloodshed and for the best scenario, is making significant effort. But of course, this is not something that Turkey can do on its own, even if we don't wish it at all. Maybe we should consider the worst case scenario as well. Let me give an example, uh, Israel can conflict with Hezbollah. From time to time we know that fires are exchanged or an American aircraft carrier is in the Mediterranean. Russia has mentioned that it is within the range. So if in the best case scenario, one of the two scenarios that you have mentioned could be a big and lasting peace. But if it does not happen, could there be bigger risks for the region in the bad case scenario? Why should we rush so much for peace? Is the bad case scenario really so bad? Well, you have asked wonderfully and you yourself explained the situation in your question. We know the actors, we know the alternatives, we know the capacity of the actors and we also know what kind of crisis might erupt. The alternative here is very bad. So if we cannot provide peace here, if we cannot establish a permanent peace, then a permanent war will be a reality in the region. So this is a scenario that no one will choose. At least that's what we think. However, as people are so emotional and do not think anything else other than violence, violence especially on the Israeli side, there should be some people who are opting for a feasible just and fair peace and we should voice this fair and just peace and as the Republic of Turkey we have been doing our best and we will continue to do what should be done because after all we are responsible in the face of history so we really would like to come out of this crisis with a clear conscience. Otherwise, we can keep our silence or we might overlook to all the facts and realities and we might act only by being captive to our emotions. But our historical stance, our understanding of politics and our tradition of statehood will not allow us to act like this. So as the Turkish state, we have been doing the same thing in many other crises. We have served as a mediator in many crises. Many countries said to us that when Turkey comes here as a mediator, Turkey is not coming with a hidden agenda. 
and Turkey is coming here as a mediator by taking into consideration the utmost benefit of the region and the benefit of both countries. So this is the case for the Palestinian issue as well. So when I say that we have a higher ground when it comes to morality, I don't think that other countries lack morality. I don't say this. But we are explaining our stance in a crystal clear fashion. Of course, there are some other countries with a wise stance and attitude regarding to this crisis. And we are in close cooperation with them, we exchange our views with them. So such comprehensive works cannot be carried out alone. You should have good friends and allies in the region. You should establish well and good alliances with them. And one of the ways of solving a problem is through establishing good alliances and good friendships. So in order to do that, you should indeed establish trust with the parties. If you want to trigger a peace process in the region, then you should follow a line based on mutual trust with your allies. There is a significant upcoming summit in Egypt, and based on what you have told us, Turkey is going there quite prepared. What are our expectations? Well, we have been discussing this matter with our Egyptian brothers and sisters. Hopefully, positive outcomes will come to fruition out of this summit. Hopefully, the countries will not only recognize the realities and the facts only, and they will come to consensus with regards to concrete steps. Everyone says that we should put an end to the teardrops, the civilians shouldn't die, the superstructures and the infrastructure shouldn't be destroyed. But when it comes to taking concrete steps, no one is taking the necessary steps to stop Israel. Israel has been criticized for many years, but still Israel is accustomed to carry out all those operations while it is being criticized. The Americans, especially Democrats, criticize Israel, as you know very well. They are against this resettlement policies by Israel, and they are advocating for two-state solutions, and they want all those attacks should come to an end, especially the Democrats and the democratic governments in USA, indeed, criticize Israel, but without any sanctions, those criticisms actually do not mean so much. And the Israeli people think that by beating an opponent, smashing an opponent with a less capacity, they are achieving this temporary success feeling and this feeling they think will provide an environment of security and peace for them. So this is a big lie indeed said to the Israeli people. Some of the politicians in Israel indeed have this understanding. Unfortunately, the politicians are politicizing this matter too much and rather than advocating for the long-term interests of the people, they are opting for their short-term interests. So this is a structural problem, and this structural problem is an ongoing one in Israel. And there are certain structural problems in the Western democracy as well. Certain steps are being taken in order to fulfill the expectations of the political party base, but it is in contradiction with the long-term interests of the state. Unfortunately, those contradictions are not overcome, so this should be prevented. I wonder whether there is a mentality, whether there is a mind who can prevent all those contradictions without crashing to the wall. I'm not so sure. But what I see is as follows. This attitude, this stance, led to huge civilian losses in Gaza. This should stop. Of course, we want this bloodshed to stop. We 
want to put an end to the teardrops in the region, but if there is no structural change in the Israelis' policies and the policies of the country supporting Israel, this will lead to a repetitive pattern, unfortunately. So we should really analyze it and we should recognize it, and there is no need to be a very smart person to do that. And as for my last question, the Israeli-Palestinian issue, I don't know how much you were able to follow TRT news uh, for uh, broadcasts in your busy agenda. Uh, we always uh, link to the area and uh, they say, for instance, a healthcare professional said they would like to thank Turkey because in terms of broadcasting their situation to the rest of the world, in, uh, Turkey or our press was uh, the top. So if there are Gazans who are able to follow Turkey, what are your remarks for them? Before anything else, I wish great patience to my Gaza brothers and sisters. I want my country and my people to know that we are doing our best. Hopefully these days will be over very soon and Turkey will continue to stand with them. We are standing by them right now and the state organs and the civil society organizations have been working day and night and they are doing their best, they are using all their means in order to dispatch the humanitarian aid to them. Anyone who can help them, help them. Anyone who can pray, they pray. These are really important, they are not alone. We also announced three days national mourning and our president is very sensitive about this issue, of course. So we this pain and this sort of as a pain of on our, uh, of ourselves. This is really important. They are not alone. Rest assured. Thank you very much. This has been a long broadcast, close to an hour. There are so many issues to discuss or questions to ask, but as you said, we are within a three-day morning period. We wish that we could discuss other issues or pro processes that could make us happy. Maybe in the future that will be possible. But this was your first broadcast at TRT News. Thank you very much uh, for being our guest. Thank you very much.